I love chicken pot pie. And so when we went low carb, high fat, I was determined to be able to make one that my family could still enjoy. After all, it's one of those comfort foods that we, uh, we do kind of miss sometimes when we're following a different way of eating. What I've done is started with three or four tablespoons of butter, and often I use ghee because ghee doesn't burn, but I've got four tablespoons of butter in my uh, skillet, and I've added one third of a cup of chopped onion. Um, be careful with onion, it's really carby, so when I say it's one third of a cup, it is measured one third of a cup, and that is still quite a bit of carbs. With the onion, I'm going to stir in some celery, and don't skip this part, it's really good to let this go long enough to get it a little brown and give it a little more flavor. And I'm going to add some mushrooms. Now the celery was two stalks chopped. The mushrooms are again one third. If you like mushrooms, you can go up to a half cup. They're not very carby. Um, and I count, remember, total carbs for me personally. Um, you could go up to a half cup. If you don't like mushrooms, you could leave them out all together. In addition to that, um, I'm going to add, well, I'll add this again too as we go, but I'll add, and I'm going to let this simmer a little bit before I add the other vegetables. When you're doing vegetables, and certainly you can use whatever vegetables you prefer, but when you're doing vegetables, be uh, sure to pay attention to the carb counts because things that we, just because it's low carb doesn't mean it's unlimited. And of course, I'm going to be dividing this over several portions, probably but depending on my family, six to eight servings from this. And what we're going to do is we'll saute these veggies. I'll add some other vegetables to it. I'll add chicken and I'll add some um, cream cheese and heavy cream. And I'll add beef broth or excuse me, chicken broth. Um, so it'll be a really nice thick kind of stew. But in all of that, you, what you want to happen is you want the chicken to really be more than the vegetables, to be more substantial with the fat and protein. So you don't want to overdo it in that department. Um, I've chosen the vegetables really carefully. So the onion, I did one third cup because they're so high carb. Celery is surprisingly higher carb when you do total carbs. And I just did two stalks of that. And the mushrooms, like I said, I did a third cup. You really could get away with a half cup. And I'm gonna add carrots. And I know that a lot of people are looking at me and probably saying carrots are not low carb. I'm adding one third cup of carrots. So look it up and you can tell me what you think about the carb count. Really a third of a cup of carrots is no more in terms of carbs than a cup of cauliflower. And it's just great for color and a little bit of flavor. If you don't want to use the carrots, please leave them out, it won't matter. So put those guys in there. Now normally I would cook the onion and stuff a little bit more, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on with it. Um, I wanted to explain this too. This is broccoli, and it's just pieces of the stalk. It doesn't have any, you'll see no florets in here. I just took the pieces of the stalk that might at some point end up in the compost bin, and I'm putting it right in, you don't want the leaves, <laughs> you just want the broccoli, but I'm putting it right in. Well, why would I use the broccoli stalk and not the florette? Think about your chicken pot pie. A lot of what's nice about comfort food is texture. And so when you use the stalk, it's more like a potato. It's more like a, a or zucchini. It is not, it's not um, the texture you get from the florette. And a lot of folks who don't like broccoli object to that texture from the florette. This is looking and smelling really good, guys. Okay, this is zucchini putting a whole cup of chopped zucchini, and the zucchini is cubed much like you would carrots. And that is a full cup. It's a little lower in carbs. I can't remember the counts right now, um, but it is a little lower in carbs than the other vegetables. So that's why you get a whole cup of that. And you'd be surprised when you add a third cup of this, a half cup of that, full cup of the other thing, you end up with a lot of vegetables. This is three fourths of a cup of cauliflower. And again, it's just in small pieces. Okay, so my cauliflower, all my vegetables are in there. I've used a little bit of zucchini, some celery, the carrots, the mushrooms. It's all there in the butter. Let's add some seasonings. Okay, in the seasonings, I was running out of containers. I have two different spices. I have a quarter of a teaspoon of thyme, which is just wonderful in pot pie or chicken, I think. 
and then a quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Use your favorite poultry seasoning. This is Bell's, but um, McCormick's makes one. There are lots of different kinds that you can use. Okay, I'm also going to use a full teaspoon of garlic powder. I wish my husband hadn't seen me adding that. He doesn't like garlic, <laughs> but he likes my chicken pot pie. Sometimes what he doesn't see, he doesn't taste. It's a strange phenomenon in our house. He doesn't see me use the coconut oil. He doesn't taste the coconut oil. Or maybe he's just kind enough not to complain. I'm going to add also some salt. And this is a half teaspoon of salt. You may find it needs more or less to your taste. Now I also will grind up some pepper, some fresh pepper in there. And really what should be happening now is your onion should be getting soft and your other vegetables will get a chance to simmer in just a minute. Okay, I, did, I do have one uh, can of drained green beans. You don't have to use these, but we like green beans in our chicken pot pie. It's just one can drained. I'll add those a little bit later because they, they're cooked already and they can get soft. We're gonna start to make the gravy that goes into the chicken pot pie. And again, the, um, the vegetables will have a chance to soften as they continue to cook and simmer. What I'm adding here is roughly four ounces of cream cheese. Um, we have found that Trader Joe's has changed their formula or perhaps the new dietary guidelines are causing the change. But the, the Trader Joe's cream cheese I always talk about is now two carbs, two grams carbs per serving don't know when that happened, but I want to call it like, you know, cream cheese gate. It's terrible that they've done that to us. But anyway, um, so I won't be using theirs anymore. I'll be using um, those that do have one carb per serving. And I'm not talking about the whipped. The whipped is different. If it's whipped, they've put air in it. So that's where the carb went. The, con the actual food content isn't the same. They've just added air, so you're technically eating less, and that's why it's only one carb. So anyway, don't, don't do that. Don't make that mistake. It can be confusing. Um, but let's see, Happy Valley or Organic Valley, I think still has one carb per serving, one total carb, and so does the Fresh Market brand, as far as I know, and I have not checked it since the new year and the new guidelines, I need to do that. I'm using up what I had in the fridge, but I'll be shopping for more soon. Okay, so that's gonna stir around and melt the cream cheese. And to this, to let it melt, I'm going to add about two cups of broth. And usually I use chicken broth, and this is homemade bone broth. I didn't skim the fat off, so it has some fat with it. You can use, um, actually that was a combination. I had a little bit of beef broth left and a little bit of um, chicken broth. And so I'm using a little bit of both. My son came in and said, Mom, when's the chicken soup gonna be ready? <laughs> like, well, not exactly chicken soup. Okay, so this has got to simmer with the cream cheese in it and let it go for just a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video I'm gonna keep stirring it to let the cream cheese melt. I'm gonna let this simmer. As it simmers, it will thicken up, and then we'll put the rest of our ingredients in. Okay, so we've been letting this simmer for just a little bit, not more than five minutes or so, and you can see that the cream cheese has pretty much disappeared, and we'll continue to stir it. It's just gotten into the broth, and the vegetables are starting to become somewhat tender. So while that keeps going, I'm going to add chicken. Now, what I did with, to get the chicken was um, our, one of our local stores had a great sale on chicken quarters. And so I took the chicken quarters and I put them in my um, pr pressure cooker and just put some water in them and pressure cooked them. So that was it. Took it out, picked the meat off of those thighs, and there's some pretty big pieces in here but pick the meat off those thighs and use that broth. Put the bones and the skin back in the instant pot for another 15, 20 minutes just to get more broth out of those bones. And so the bones are gonna be all soft and powdery. And I've got this yummy chicken. I'm gonna put in about three cups. I probably won't use all of this. We'll see how it goes um, once I get it in here. But use whatever chicken 
you like. And I guess you could do a beef pot pie with something similar. When I made um, broth last time, I used beef neck bones, and that gave some really great beef left over, and it's nice to be able to use that in a recipe. Um, because when you're cooking the broth, then the meat doesn't have a lot of flavor. So putting it in something like this, where there's a lot of flavor, is really a win-win combination. So while I'm putting the chicken in, let's think a little bit about our pot pie topping. How on earth are we going to do that? Well, for some people, when I say chicken pot pie, they immediately think of a pastry crust. They think of a bottom crust and a top crust and a, a pastry crust. Other people think of it more as dropped biscuits, so it's more cakey, biscuity-like. So the type of crust you want to use depends on what your favorite is. So let me give this a stir. We'll see if we need more chicken. Um, I have used, I have two biscuit recipes um, out on YouTube, and I have used both of them now for pot pie. The Bell's Biscuit, which is the, I call it the egg white biscuit, is the recipe that calls for like 10 egg whites. And so you cook up the egg whites and um, okay. we cook up the egg whites, or you, I'm sorry, you don't cook them up. You use a mixer and you whip them up and then you beat it in. That's Bell's Biscuits. That makes a great drop biscuit kind of recipe. If you have oat fiber and you want to try the Miracle Biscuit recipe, which is one I just did um, around the holidays, I think between Christmas and Thanksgiving, if you want to use that, um, that makes, you can roll it out, you can add a little more um, mozzarella cheese than it calls for, you can roll it out and roll it out and drape it over and put it in the oven and it makes a really nice um, kind of a pastry crust. It's fluffy and just looks really good. Okay, this needs pepper. I can just see that it needs pepper. Okay, I'm going to add the green beans now. And it's getting thicker and yummier. Let's put some fresh pepper in here. I already thought I was going to sneeze and now I have pepper, so wouldn't that be fun? Okay. <laughs> you know what's going to happen when we're videoing food, right? Okay, put as much as you like, but um, certainly the fresh pepper, it just, I don't know, it's kind of asking for it. I had to add that in. All right, let me get this a stir. This is smelling up the pot. This is, I forget how many quarts this is, maybe a three quart pan. Um, I don't actually remember. I'll have to look it up, but it's really getting full. My oven is on for 350. And I decided to, instead of using Bell's Biscuits for drop, and instead of rolling out the biscuits for um, Miracle Biscuits, I decided to do kind of a hybrid. So I can't wait to see how exactly this turns out. Can't wait to show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is getting thicker, as you can probably see. I'm gonna add some heavy cream to it. I'm gonna turn it down just a little. And this is a, I'm sorry, I understand this is a three and a half quart dish. Okay, and I'm not adding a ton of heavy cream. This is a cup, and I probably won't even add the whole thing just because it's getting full. There's a lot of chicken in this, and it smells amazing. Okay, and I'm using about a half cup of heavy cream. A little more than a half cup. Again, kind of use your judgment. Let it simmer uncovered if it has too much moisture. Another little trick you can do to thicken it is to use some xanthan gum or use some glucomannan. I can actually say that now. I really like what glucomannan does uh, versus xanthan. Both can get slimy if they were used. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a half a teaspoon of oh, the glucomannan and I'm going to shake it over. Now this is glucomannan. It comes from the cognac root. Um, you can order it from Nutrition. It is basically the ingredient that's in the Miracle Noodles, but I promise it doesn't taste, if you've had a bad experience, it doesn't have a seafoody taste like the uh, Miracle Noodles can have. We really like it. And I'm using a half teaspoon for this big pot. Now what's gonna happen, what I've done before with this, and this is my glucomannan that I use, what I've done before is I've added it to recipes and thought, okay, that's not thick enough. <laughs> and then you end up with pudding. 
um, especially as it cools, it tends to thicken. So don't make that mistake. Put a little bit, kind of trust the process, give it a stir, and you'll see that it thickens pretty quickly. And it, when you use small amounts, it will not get slimy with you. Okay, man, this is smelling and looking so incredible. And the vegetables are not mushy. They're not going to be overdone cooking it like this. If they're not tender enough for you, by all means, cook them a little longer, but they're going to cook too when we put this rascal in the oven. Okay, I have to do this. I have to try it, right? I think we have a winner. Not slimy. It's getting thick. You could probably use a little more salt and pepper. Okay, I'm gonna smooth that out. Let's work on our biscuit. Okay. So, I've made up a batch of Miracle Dough. Actually, it's a double batch. I've also got some bacon. I've got some cheddar cheese. Do you see where we're going with this? <laughs> we're gonna take the Miracle Biscuit dough. I've already added, when I was mixing it up, I've already added a little bit of garlic powder, quarter teaspoon, and a quarter teaspoon of onion salt. Let's add bacon, and that is about a half cup, a third to a half cup of bacon. My husband actually put that in there. And I'm going to use roughly a cup of cheddar, and we'll put it in there and see what it looks like. Okay, and again, we have options. I could take this and roll it out. And when you roll it out, this dough can have kind of a flat, um, it's not as puffy, but it's still a great texture. It will puff as it, as it cooks. But what I'm doing is I'm adding more cheddar and I'm adding bacon. So now what I'm going to do, and let me give this a stir before I do it. I can go ahead and turn this off. Yeah, I'll go ahead and turn it off because it's starting to stick on the bottom. And yeah, it's getting nice and thick. The only thing I think I could add to this would be some more butter. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't think it needs it because there was a lot of fat in that broth. Okay, this will continue to thicken, remember, as it cools too because of the glucomonum. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do kind of like drop biscuits and just put it around. And I don't think I want to cover the entire thing. I think I'm going to do it just like this. Now, again, I could roll it out, but um, that's so much more time. This has already been kind of time intensive for us. And so I'm gonna drop it around kind of in crumbles. And what I don't use, I did double this recipe. What I don't use, I'm just gonna make biscuits for the family to have like for breakfast or a different meal. But I'm gonna crumble this around the top. It's going to go into my oven. 375 degrees. I'm going to start checking it at around 20 minutes. And I bet it'll take about 30 to fully cook. I'll let you know for sure when we pull it out of the oven. And I'm putting this kind of thick and there are little holes in it where you can see the, um, the pot pie mix. Looks and smells pretty doggone good. I think we're gonna have a winner on our hands. All right, that's it. This is going in the oven. And um, hold on tight and we'll see how we did. Hi, so our chicken pot pie is out of the oven and Jonathan is gonna come and try it with me. I've taken some out already um, so that it'll cool. And basically what you've got is that savory chicken pot pie on the bottom with all of our vegetables, and then that crunchy, crispy topping with the bacon and the cheese on top. So let me set this over here and let it cool. Mom, I just like the bottom. You just like the bottom part? Yeah. Well, here's a bite for you to try. All right, you can see what you think. Maybe it's cool enough. Well, you, you like it? <laughs> Jonathan's our carnivore, so if he says it's good, then it's pretty good. I hope that you make this for your family and that they enjoy it too.